and welcome back to my Let's Challenge of Final Fantasy XIII. In the last episode, we started Chapter XIII, the final chapter of this game. And now we are here, still in Chapter XIII, making our way towards the first uh, mini-boss battle in this section. Um, yeah, we'll have a boss battle and then some other stuff. Um, It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. We're gonna try and uh, take out these guys. Should be some preemptives. Is some preemptives. Lovely, lovely. We can hit an, a solid quake here. So we get a stagger, we get uh, Imperial on, lovely. We should be able to get a stagger before. Should be able to kill this. The Vela cycle is down. Lovely, awesome. So now all we need to do is take out the sacrifice, and then we will be in. Obviously, very good set. Lovely. There we go. Okay, so let me just check something. I just want to know. I think we can actually. Can we take this platform back somewhere? No, it's not a platform. Don't know why I thought it was. Anyway, it just looked like a platform from uh, back down there, but there we go. Ah, oh, come on. Why did they respawn? They shouldn't have respawned. We'll try and dodge this battle. Nice and simple, actually. To get away with, get away from those guys. Um, so if we just check the map, the map's going to tell us virtually nothing. Um, so we want to go straight on to start off with. Continue onwards. Uh, see where this takes. Sacrifices. Is that sacrifices and Dagonite and some Dagonites. Yeah, th these are the enemies of this area. Um, The dog, and it's amazing. I love it. Just because it's doing so much damage. Yeah, the other guy's gonna go down in the uh, sort of. Yeah, imperil plus D shell on these sacrifices does so much damage, it's ridiculous. That was beautiful. Thank you, Hope, for making... <laughs> you just decided, you know what? These guys need to die. I'm just going to spam Pandago until they die. It was great. Um, so we got another battle, uh, some Dagonites. I'm pretty sure if we head all the way back up to the top, we'd just see some more sacrifices. So we needn't do that. Uh, we're going to start off with the sacrifice, um, just because it has instant death. Oh, 
Although to be fair, I mean, if I can get pe if I can get fog on the sacrifice, that would be amazing because then he can't um, use. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now he can't use that. Lovely. We'll just get some Medigala action here. Unfortunately, I am dazed currently. Ah, we've lost control of this, come on. Go. That's what we want. We want to see Thundaga a lot. We want to see a lot of, you know, just area of effect attacks. If you can start spamming Thundaga, that would be amazing. I would start spamming Blitz if I had, um... Oh, please, please don't. Oh, thank goodness. Always scary. Will never not be scary, that. <laughs> So, once more, we need to start spamming fog. I don't know what the percentage chance is, it's probably like 1 in 100 or something like that. Or even lower, but there we go, fog on, lovely. He can't, he should no longer be able to use death on us. Um, bit, a bit more of a fight, this one. We lost control of the battle somewhat, sort of midway through. Which is, you know... Unhelpful. Yeah, three twenty eight. Yeah. We need to be a bit more focused there, sort of concentrate on which enemies we really need to take out and then, you know, obviously and then do that, as opposed to sort of flip between lots of different enemies. If they weren't gonna use Thundarga on the Daganites, we should have taken them out. It's a little frustrating. Preemptive? Yes. Love a preemptive strike. Mainly because it means the Sequilla Vela cycle is no longer a massive threat to me. Uh, quake. What a hinder that Vela cycle now. Don't attack. Don't let him attack. Come on. Yes. Oh, thank goodness. Ooh, boy, that was close. Nope. That does cycle, like, oh, come on. As much as I dislike the sacrifices, like, the Vela Cycle is by far the more dangerous enemy here, so... Sure, but as long as it's not on me, it's okay. The 
it's just annoying with death that you know you can go through a whole um, a whole playthrough uh, you know of this final chapter and you can never get hit by death and you can go through another one and you'll get hit by it like twice in a row and you're just you know it's, it, it's just luck. At least when you're trying to manipulate death, you're very much you know sort of accepting the fact that you're using a luck-based strategy. You know, I'm pretty sure that Fang has stagger lock weapon. I mean, it must it must be a stagger lock weapon the way that she can't stagger things. So I'm assuming lightning isn't. Otherwise, that would have been very bad team prep. What's yours? Quick stagger, yeah. Oh yeah, so Quick Stagger, um, I think it staggers someone when they're at like 90%, so if you're, uh, you know, if you've got a stupidly high stagger, then, you know, it doesn't need quite as much, which is really quite useful. So we'll head down here and head onto this uh, platform, which will take us to the next area. These aren't the only types of enemies we see, there are a lot of them, uh, you know, we see a lot of uh, these enemies, and naturally the sort of, the sacrifices, the uh, Dagobites, the sorry, Dago Knights, Dagobites, but we also have these guys, um, who aren't particularly fun, um, much like the, I think we saw them in Chapter 5, and also maybe in Chapter 9, um, I think we definitely saw them on the Palamecia. Uh, but as obviously we have a Sanctum Templar here. See a Templar being, uh, you know, the name for like a, a religious soldier who went to fight uh, in like the Crusades. Of like the Knights Templar, I'm sure if you played any Assassin's Creed game, you've heard of a Templar. So there you go. Nice and simple with a preemptive. Obviously, preemptives are golden in virtually every scenario. So can we? Yes, we can. That's actually a dead end. So we need to go that way first. Which means we might need to fight the Templar again. We've got Dag Daganites. And a... Hmm. This is going to be tough. I think Dispelga is going to be in key here. I think we're going to use Dispelga. And then we're going to want to focus on the Dagonites. So I'm just going to swap to Lightning. And... Mystic Tower is going to be very important. Yeah. So, techniques, Espalga. Thundaga, we will just spam Thundaga pretty much. We just need to find the right one to use it on so that it hits as many as possible. Also summon. I mean, Odin is electric, which is good. That was my bad for not um, realizing. I thought we were in Mystic Tower and not in. Um... Not in Smart Bomb. No, we definitely want to try and kill this guy. We can kill this guy.
Yeah. Uh, Noily is going Veil. If he got in Thunder, that would be. Or in Fire, you know, work this week. Nukes them, absolutely nukes them. I guess uh, the Bella Cycles weak to fire. That must be why we've gone in fire, in, in fire as opposed to in thunder. Gee, that's just a, an absolute mess of an end attack. <laughs> just looks completely messy. But there we go. Okay, so after this we'll, um... Go, Smart Bomb! Barrel, lovely! And then we'll just sort of swap between Relentless Assault and... Okay, so it's, it's a physical move, that must mean. I was going to say, probably should have stayed in, just seeing that I was about to stagger, but... We didn't need to go defensive there, really. But there we go. <laughs> What you learn? Lovely. That wasn't too bad, not too bad. And we've got a Sanctum Templar. Are these all boosting enemies? I feel like they're all boosting enemies. In which case, Dispel Gun might also be useful again. We'll just concentrate on the Daganites uh, first. I feel like that makes more sense. Mana Drive Dispel. Interesting. Okay, so you can actually remove our buffs. We won't let him do that too much. But also, Mana Drive Dispel is good because... What it means is that he's constantly sort of having to, uh, you know, adjust to us. Okay, so I'm assuming that's what the mana drive was. So he shoves D protect and D shell on. I'm just going to assume a me. That's pretty cool, actually. I mean, it's cool as a, I wish it's a, it's a move that I wish I had. Obviously, we don't. Um, so we now have Bar Thunder to protect from his massive uh, lightning effects. Okay, so we can only really get rid of, uh, you know... Obviously, Dispel only gets rid of the first one. And he looks like he staggers really fast. Maybe we should have targeted him first. Things you find out. Yep, lovely. Lovely. Ah, well, we did that pretty fast according to that, so maybe that was the right way around. 
So we've got another another Templar down there with some sacrifices. Um, that's going to be a pain of a battle just because the sacrifices are extremely annoying. Um, still, we must get used to all of the. Uh, sort of The various enemies types and stuff like that. It looks like there's a couple of side paths which lead to a few items here as well. So we'll see how far we can get here, though we'll probably, or almost certainly, hit the first mi uh, like mini boss. That's sort of about halfway through this first chapter. Um, this first section of chapter 13. Uh, whether we go any further beyond that is another matter. That's great. I think we can take on this Templar first. Anathema is annoying. Uh, but we've been, he's been fogged, which means he can't actually um, really threaten me with um, sanctify. Interesting. And threatening as well. Let's uh, stagger this guy for good. So, thankfully Hope can live a Sanctify, which is good news, always good news, to see that Hope can live something. You never really know with Hope. That definitely... Stop it. I'll show you Army of One. Uh, if we go to abilities, go right down to the bottom. So Army of One uses up everything, essentially. And I'll show you uh, what it can do in terms of trying to raise that stagger if uh, we don't kill it. So that's Army of One. It does sort of... I, I can't remember exactly how many hits. It might be 15 or 13 around that sort of uh, number. That many hits in a row um, raises the stagger by a huge amount. It's obviously a Ravager ability as we get a nugget of Rhodochrosite. Um, so another sort of, you know, um, uh, upgrade catalyst. And once more, so sacrifices I think this time we'll lead Fang. And the aim here is to just fog these sacrifices so they can't um, death us. We'll also fog the, the Templars as well. It's like, it's all cool, you showing off that you can use your Aroga. Um, it's hope. And it's cool that he's firing off so fast. But it's not actually that useful to us because it doesn't raise the uh, stagger bar by nearly as much as five different spells would, as opposed to, you know, one big one. So the Templars seem pretty weak, um, which is always good. find out that an enemy that you thought might be a big threat is actually, you know, not too bad. We can throw on uh, 
dis uh, de shell and imperil to really threaten um, the sacrifice. It's gonna start taking a bunch from our ravages. So much from our ravages indeed that the fang doesn't even need to do anything. really good actually that was a really good that worked out really well so anything around there no so it looks like we can just continue on meet up with uh the silver silver statue once more and this should be boss i think yeah it is Ah, yes, I remember this. Okay, so, uh, this is, um, Bandersnatch and Jabberwocky. Um, we definitely want to start on Jabberwocky. He can heal, if I remember correctly. May well use our Libra Scope there. Uh, items, Libra Scope. So, yeah, I think... He can heal, whereas the other one cannot. Heal me, please. Okay, so it looks like Fang's going to be kind of... Not quite the character we really want to be in here, but there we go. Okay, they can heal each other, it seems. Oh, which is frustrating. So maybe we should have gone for Bandersnatch first, it's tough to say. What are you... So you're immune to magic and halved physical, which is... Pretty dangerous, if you're honest. Uh, But they look like they stagger pretty fast, which is always good. What's interesting is that uh, these enemies, we actually, uh, what well, whilst we see them in this sort of mini boss battle here, we actually, uh, they actually appear later on as well, uh, within this chapter, as sort of just standard enemies. Try and get that lovely deep protect on. And we should be able to just finish him off with uh, Fang. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. So one down. So, it, it's a similar battle to Enki and Emil, um, the bosses of Chapter 6. Um, similar, not the same in that uh, these guys aren't elemental, I don't think, so therefore you don't have the same sort of elemental comparisons. Rather, one's completely immune to physical and one's completely immune to magic. Um, and that's the sort of the different options, as it were. And obviously we're doing far less to uh, this guy because Fang is nowhere near as good a uh, physical, uh, sorry, a, a, a magical decker as a physical one. But we should hopefully be able to finish him off within this stagger, that would be lovely. Yeah, we do. Lovely. Really good. Really good. So we take out Bandersnatch and Jabberwocky. Um, 
The etymology of those obviously comes from uh, Lewis Carroll, actually, I think, um, who wrote the poem entitled Jabberwocky, um, and the Bandersnatch is a creature mentioned within that same poem. To see if we have what it takes to see things through. So yeah, so they both sort of come from the same uh, source, I guess. So once more, the uh, arena will re. Where's this end? I don't know. If there is one, I can't see it. I can't do this. All these sinful people once, like us. But that's what Bartanalus is going for. Don't you see? Make us feel guilty, lose faith, and the second we give up, it's focus time. Wait till we're broken and slip on the leash. Yeah, well, when you think about it, having all this empathy, it puts us humans at a big disadvantage. Maybe. But it's also what makes us dangerous. Fang? What's wrong? I have nothing. Just that time's running short. It's okay. My mind's made up this time. We'll just make cocoon out of it. Yeah. I guess we will. <laughs> so onwards we must press. It has slightly... Structured itself, I think. Maybe more so when we hit here. Okay, so we hit the second area, and the first thing you can see uh, in the distance is the uh, sort of the tyrant type enemy. We see two velocycles over there, and we see a bunch of sacrifice and um, Dagonite battles over there. If we check our map, we can see that I think everything loops around essentially, um, goes full circle. And I think uh, the white purse, uh, the white sort of fallacy behind us is just a warp back to the previous area. So I think the first thing we want to do is take on this first guy. I believe he is an immortal. Um, well, as in his name is an immortal. I'm pretty sure he isn't for, for our um, purposes. Um, Sentinels help and just in terms of withholding damage, but ultimately aren't too vital. Um, I think we should start in, I think we should definitely have a second healing paradigm actually, so we'll go back to diversity. So yeah, this guy is an immortal, I believe. He is the only one in the game, also, I believe. Um, so if you want to get him in your uh, data, him and his data in the thing, I'm just going to use another Libra scope. We have more than enough. There aren't nearly enough enemies left in the game for us to really, you know, need to worry about it too much. So take on the Centurion Blade first, as always. Um, We should be able to do hefty damage to him. Indeed we can.
So he behaves like much of the other um, enemies of this type. He has his physical attacks, has certain magic attacks as well, which we do need to be uh, slightly wary of. Which is why we're going to go to diversity just for hopefully some Curaja or Cura. It would have been amazing if we could have staggered him beforehand. Now, I believe... Jesus. I'm dead. Yeah. Ah! Damn. Uh, that's really annoying. This is well worth it. Like, um, it has some of the best items in the game, I think, if we follow this path. Well, some very good items, at least, if we follow this path. Um, but yeah, no, that's... Oh. So the Centurion Blade just, we got so close to Stagger there is the thing. So, so close to Stagger. If we had staggered him, then uh, we'd have been absolutely set. Um, what's the best thing to have? Like, obviously, um, you know, he, he wants to forge his blade. I mean, but y you saw how much damage that did, jeez. So much damage from the Centurion Blade. And again, um, as with all of the sort of uh, blades um, from this sort of... Uh, they can't be distracted with... Um, Can't be distracted by sentinels and can't be. Um, uh, I think that's the main thing. They can't be distracted by sentinels, so you've really got to sort of. Okay, we're gonna hope for some. Obviously, this time, yeah, we didn't actually get our uh, Libra scope off, so. Eh. We should be able to stagger him before he hits Forge Blade. I may well do the battle again off screen just to um, just to get the Libra uh, later in because it will annoy me otherwise. But but uh... actually, you probably well, I probably, probably wouldn't do it off screen. Done everything else on screen. And again, we can obviously interrupt him. There we go, lovely. Immortal down. So much. Let's just survive the first. Survive the first blade. Um, destroy it, and then um, so yeah. And then stagger him before we can forge a second. That's how you defeat it. To be fair, uh, we don't actually currently have a perfect... We, we, we can't get a perfect Libra anyway, because I think I had to... We had to redo some areas. Or I had, I had to redo a lot of the game when my PlayStation... See, so yeah, I, I had to redo a lot of the... Uh, I think I mentioned this before, I had to redo a lot, of, you know... Uh, get back to where we were with regards to this, and that uh, took a long time. There we go, the first thing that's actually, like, legit really good. So, you can see we've got two things, uh, two rather important items there. Um, in, we got a Weirding Glyph, which is the next level up in Magic. Um, so, Magic plus 150 as opposed to 100. Uh, much like the power glove that we have with Fang, and also we got a adamant bangle, which is 800 HP, um, which is better than the diamond I'm assuming we had last time, which is 500. So essentially, um, these the floors here form three layers, um, as we saw in the cutscene. We've just been 
We start off on the middle layer, that's where the uh, the immortal was. We then went down to the, sorry, went up to the top layer, and now have come down to the bottom. We'll get a nugget of scarletite. And we will get an elixir, which is also an amazing item. There's like so few elixirs in the game. This might be nearly the only one. Um, but you can make them. The way you get elixirs, I think, is you have doctor's codes. And I think if you upgrade them to max level and then you dismantle them, I think they give you elixirs. Um, elixirs essentially restore your party to full health as an item, um, which is really powerful if you don't have, uh, you know, if renew. It restores everyone to full health, I believe. If we just check. Elixir, yeah, fully restores party HP and TP, so it's 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 amazing. It gives you full techniques, everything. It's perfect in, you know, these uh, crazy scenarios where you're just like, I, I, we are going to die if I don't do something about this. So yeah. So yeah, that is that. Uh, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. And hope, unfortunately, we die again, which I think takes us down to five. I think I said we we're at five at the end of chapter twelve. I think we're actually at six. We only died twice in chapter 12 to both of the bosses. And now we're here. So I think we're down to five lives. Um, it's getting a little tight, I'll say. Um, would obviously love uh, to actually just get through the rest, uh, get through to the final boss now without further dying. But uh, we still have a fair few more bosses and some more difficult battles up ahead. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode and I hope you will join me on the next.